Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today I wanted to do a short video on how you can combine OpenAI ChatGPT API with a little bit of Python library. So we are going to use library for speech to text and uh, text to speech. And I'm going to create a virtual assistant and tinker with a few details that might be fun for you. So let's get started. Today's code is not in any public GitHub repository, but I'm going to go slowly through this one. So if you see something you like, you can pause the video, take a look at what kind of choices I have made. Furthermore, like 15% of the code was generated by ChatGPT when I was asking it to create me virtual assistant code in Python. So I'm mostly going to focus on interesting tinkerings here. Uh, in other words, anything you see is trivial to do. It's not really difficult. That's actually point of this video to encourage you to try yourself. And by the way, if this video inspires you to do something fun, let me know in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. Uh, what are the key parts? Well, one part would be open AI API. You could use some other GPT models. You can use a self-hosted model. You can use Azure services, for example. But for today's video, it's going to be the public OpenAI API, and it already allows us to do some fun things that you cannot do in the user interface alone. Okay, so uh, always hide your secrets. Uh, what I have done is I have registered to the website of OpenAI. I have created myself an API key, and that's in my hidden secrets. So I'm able to grab it and uh, configure it. Otherwise, the calls wouldn't work. Now, I'm actually paying uh, for the calls with my credit card already. I ran out of the free tokens, but you do get a little bit of free credits uh, when, when you start. So you don't need to put your money in online. Um, I'm a bit stingy with my tokens nowadays that I actually have to pay for those. Okay. Next important part here is how, how do you recognize speech? So actually, <clears throat> Before I explain this one, let's run this example. Oh, wise overlord, please tell me how I can write clean code uh, and do not uh, create messy code that would be horrible for somebody else to analyze. Okay, as you can see, it did pretty decent job, so it was able to grab my my questions, it failed with some of the kind of utterings, but it's no wonder because uh, it's my Finnish accent, I'm afraid. Well, my dear, it's quite simple. To write clean code, you must first understand what clean code truly means. Clean code is not just about following a set of rules or guidelines, it's about having a mindset of craftsmanship and excellence in everything you do. To achieve this, you must have a deep understanding of the problem you are trying to solve and the tool. Okay, I think you got the point. So let's elaborate on the solution a little bit. Uh, first important part here is how do I grab my speech to my microphone and convert it to text? And that's almost trivial. So uh, Python has this awesome speech recognition library, and it's a wrapper on top of a lot of power. In my case, only thing I had to change here after I asked uh, ChatGPT to write my code for me was that I actually elaborated which microphone device index I was using to get the proper one. Um, I'm able to have it listen for something and grab the audio. Uh, then I'm using a recognizer that's interpreting the audio and making a text out of that one. Um, so a few kind of details here. Uh, one would be that it would obviously be possible to use some trigger word like O Overlord or something like that. I'm not doing that right now, but I could. However, I don't. This is just a tinkering experiment, so I don't actually like it to listen to what I speak and accidentally send some utterings to OpenAI. Uh, you know why, <laughs> if you have been watching my channel. So uh, that's one, one part where you could do things differently, but for my experiment, I'm just kind of listening, create whatever is spoken. Then next part, you could use some other recog recognizing uh, engine. We have a lot of choices. One of them is actually Whisper. Whisper is OpenAI API, so we could go with that one. We have options that would let you do things uh, kind of offline without any APIs, but Google is pretty impressive and pretty easy to use, so why not? I, I was happy with that one. So I didn't change it at all. So 
This one came straight from the OpenAI chat GPT. Pretty much I let it write my code for me. Now the next one I had to change because I got a kind of code for a Da Vinci model. And Da Vinci is a kind of older model and it's more expensive. So I, I immediately changed that to chat G, sorry, GPT 3.5 Turbo. And by the way, any minute now you might have access to 4.0, which is like 10 times more powerful. It's already crazy, crazy much better for most purposes. But DaVinci is older stuff and it's also more expensive stuff. So uh, chat models are better right now. And by the way, end of the year, you might have capability to access um, GPT-5 here. So how, how would that feel like? It's going to get a bit crazy this year. I'm using chat, chat completion API. So main thing about it, it's, it, I'm not just sending my prompt. I'm sending the structure that contains parts where I can have system instructions. I can have my user prompts, multiple one of those. And I could also feed back the old answers I got from the API to have a conversation going on. I'm not doing that right now, but I could. And uh, I can cap the token count. It used to be 4,000 with uh, GPT-3. But now that you might have access to, to GPT-4, it blows up so you can have max token count of 8,000 or 16,000 or even more. So obviously then you can elaborate more and carry on longer conversations. And you can tinker with the temperature, which basically is how creative against how kind of down to earth uh, conservative it's going to be with the answers. 0.5 is a safe kind of baseline that you can use. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, I'm sending my text in, I'm getting response back and then, then doing something with that. But I do want to elaborate just slightly with this one. So let's talk about system instruction part. Because you can tinker with this one to adjust. Uh, you can scope down the model and you can give it a role already. You can say it's a software developer or financial advisor or tour guide or whatever is kind of important for you. In my case, it's going to be arrogant, overconfident, and irritable senior software developer. Do you know anyone like that? <laughs> I'm also saying that please give me philosophical larger than life views, so make it very bold and opinionated. So that's what we were getting when I was asking for something. I was a bit kind of actually surprised that it was uh, so civilized, so it could have been even more brutal, but... That's about fine-tuning your instructions a little bit, okay? But uh, I got uh, a lot of philosophical level advice and a bit condescending. My dear, if you want to write clean code, okay? That's what I was looking for, to make it a bit more kind of uh, personalized or a bit, bit more colorful in this case. The rest of the code is very trivial. Uh, feed the text to text-to-speech engine. And again, what Google, sorry, what ChatGPT gave me, I pretty much replaced with my own. And I will elaborate a bit, uh, bit why. <clears throat> but my main program is very simple. Listen to speech, uh, feed it to ChatGPT API, get a response, uh, convert it to speech using your text-to-speech engine. Okay, so that's what you saw in action previously. Why did I change the text-to-speech part? Well, I'm glad you asked, because that default was something like this, so it was suggesting PyTTSX3. I get it. It's an old, reliable, good library. It was around in 2021 when ChatGPT was trained. However, listen to it. Just listen to this one. This is text free speaking. There are several text to speech libraries for Python out there, but the best one really depends. <laughs> so it's pretty horrible. Why would you be using such a powerful model and then uh, kind of cripple the output with something that's almost difficult to understand and definitely very robotic? So that was horrible. Now, to be fair, PyTTSX3 might be able to tap into more powerful models if you are using it in Windows or Mac OS. So you can you can tap into those ones. But I'm running this in uh, Linux, in, in uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. So available models are pretty horrible. Uh, all the easy and old models are pretty horrible. So there is more powerful models available. And the one uh, rapid upgrade might be Google. 
GTTS model. I played with that one as well. Let's run that one. There are several text to speech libraries for Python out there, but the best one. Much better, just slightly clunky still. So you can go a little bit better. And I ended up with something I cannot even pronounce properly, but that would be Coqui library, TTS library. Um, it's uh, crazy powerful. It's now a lot bigger as well. And it has a lot of capabilities you might never use as well. I played with a few different models there, but I ended up uh, using a nice pre-trained model. It's called Wits model, variational inference with adverse serial, uh, learning for end-to-end -end text to speech. I can almost pronounce that. But anyway, it's just one of the models available. And the model comes with uh, a lot of its multi-voice model. So there is a lot of uh, pre-trained uh, and adjusted voices that I can choose from that come with an accent. So <clears throat> I used one for my Jarvis. Let's use another one. There's model P23273. Uh, and this was one quite pleasant one. Let's listen to that one. Let's write it properly and listen to that one. Here we go. There are several text-to-speech libraries for Python out there, but the best one really depends on your specific needs and preferences. Some popular options include... That's a pretty decent one. And uh, I can live with that one already. It's pretty good, good sound, and there is a lot, lot to choose from the voices, depending on what you are going for. But I was going for some uh, voices that would not be horribly kind of robotic, and would perhaps have a little hint of personality, and uh, must be very clear. So that's what I ended up with. And as I mentioned, I just assembled all these parts together in less than 100 lines of code, and it's already much better than many offerings that I have paid money for. So I could actually use this and wrap it in a, in a uh, crazy uh, mini mini uh, Yoda, baby Yoda uh, uh, doll, perhaps, and have it advise me in my work. Um, I have been, of course, like anybody, uh, I have been using already ChatGPT uh, to get some kind of rapid ideas and bounce them around. So it, it is actually a, a valuable tool for me. And with this little code, I can make it more useful uh, by interacting with it with my voice it's actually a very useful tool for specific purposes and i always like to carry a bit of personality and and kind of cutting edge tech so that would be it i also want to mention that of course there's way to take this even one step further you could go with the ai cloned models you could use the best uh, best speech models there are you can clone your own voice or your buddy's voice and go crazy with that one. People are already doing that, so why not? But for my purposes, this was kind of the level and balancing that I, I wanted to do. You can take this idea and go crazy with it. And please let me know. I like to know when people go crazy with these ideas. But I hope you enjoyed today's little practical video. I just wanted to share you something practical. Um, if you have any questions, comments, anything to share, use the comment section. And of course, I always immensely appreciate if you click that like button by now, if you had any entertainment or education out of my video, if you get any val value out of this one. And please subscribe to my channel for more. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. See you in the next video. Bye bye.